Hey, what's up, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551, and I am back with a My Two Cent Switch slash gaming video for this week, where I take a look at some of the stories that came out this week that caught my attention and give you my thoughts and my opinion of them. So why don't we get started with this week's video and this, or the first part of our story? And for this one, it's it's two, kind of a two-parter as it involves NIS America, ranging from an announcement made to comments that were made that exactly may have upset some people, but they sort of kind of walked back on it. So why don't we start with the first one, and that is the, the announcement, though, that according to NIS America, um, a remake of the original Disgaea is in the works, and it should be out in July on both the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch. Referred to on, according to an article on Destroy, Destructoid, again, links will be in the description of this video, you could check it out. Um, Disgaea Refined, the remake of the original and still beloved Disgaea, is coming soon in Japan by the way of Dinkaya PlayStation. We now know that, I believe that's the name though. We now know that it arrives on July 26th in the region of both the PS4 and switch it also sports a limited edition sku with a soundtrack um special box and a calendar though so the announcement that this remake of the first one is kind of interesting though and the fact that it's coming to the nintendo switch as well obviously indicates that nis america must be pretty pleased with some of the sales numbers of their games that have been released on the nintendo switch i believe last time i heard um sky of five sold Sky 5 Complete sold a little bit over 100,000 copies, which, assuming those were the sales numbers they were aiming for, though, obviously they were very happy with it, and we are certainly seeing more support for NIS America on the Nintendo Switch, including their newest title that came out, Penny Punching Princess, which I will do eventually do a review on that one, though. So, the fact that they're remaking the first one is a nice addition, and it might help, you know, bring out may help introduce gamers who may have never who may have played like Sky 5 as their first Disgaea game and never have played the other ones though and for those who own a Switch and have played Sky 5 um, this is a op great opportunity right now it seems to be only announced for Japan in that region only but I wouldn't rule out the possibility of them bringing it over here to the west as well um, so while that's great that a Disgaea remake is coming out, though, NIS America kind of got themselves in a little bit of hot water in terms of some of the comments they recently made. Um, according to an article on, again, on Destructoid, again, links are in the description, though. Um, in, in the original article, the, the president of NIS America spoke spoke about the original plans to make the all-gal fighting game PS4 exclusive before switching focus to the Nintendo Switch for Western Market. In the follow-up questions, he comments that Sony, quote, doesn't care about small publishers like us. Um, part of that interview became found in, I believe, called MCV. And they asked, you are working much closer with Nintendo recently. How did this come about and what benefits have you seen in the company he said quote i'll give you the scoop originally we signed with snk on snk heroines just on the playstation 4 format then last year an opportunity happening happened at gamescom two third parties happened to meet all together outside nintendo's meeting room the first meeting was between nis america and nintendo of europe and the next meeting was between snk and nintendo of europe of course these two were separate meetings, then after their meetings, influential people from SNK came to our booth and said, uh, Hey, Mr. Yamash, uh, again, Y-A-M-A-S-H-I-T-A, again, apologize if I'm not saying the name correctly. Is it possible to cancel our contract on PlayStation 4? Nintendo wants to work on this title on an exclusive basis. So these third parties... Um, came together and the team at NIS and SNK decided to go with Nintendo for the Western market. Physical copy wise, it's going to be a Switch exclusive. PS4 wise, it's going to be just digital. That's the deal. We will not release a package version for the PS4 format. Then Nintendo will act as the distributor for this game. Then they promise to buy a lot of units. MCV also asked though, 
Um, what is your strategy for the Europe m moving forward? From the JRPG market, the biggest country is France, so most of our key titles such as Wise, um, Yeast, I think Five, I've, I'm I think I apologize. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not great with Roman numerals, so apologize for that. And the Disguise series, we localized the game in France to get in a much better position in Europe because the French market is the biggest for JRPG titles. We're starting to do more on the Nintendo Switch. SNK Heroes is not the only one. We team up with Nintendo Europe for our Switch titles. They support us in a good way compared to that to Sony. It is not friendly with small publishers like us. They just care about big Japanese companies. Also, if we sim simultaneously release a Switch version and a PS4 version of the same title, currently the sales trend is two to one. That, mean, that means the Switch version sells twice as much as the PS4 version. Physically and digitally, a lot of PS4, uh, PS4 titles are coming up, so market is very competitive. Compare that to the Switch market still has a lot of room for publishers to make money ouch for a lot of sony fans and apparently that might have upset some people when he when they when he made that comment though while there might be some truth to it though i'm not sure you want to throw sony completely under the bus after the fact that you also as a fact that the series the sky series believe it or not got its start on I believe it got started on the PlayStation 2 when the first one came out. Well, since he made that comment though, he kind of backtracked on it. Whether this was he made a mistake or whether um, Nintendo or Sony called him to say, hey, fix this mess you made, who knows. But he then released a new statement apologizing for comments made during the interview. The apology seems to be more specifically aimed at his take on how NIS Nintendo deal came about rather than the slightly more obvious insensitive statement about Sony's lack of love for the little guy. He apologized reading um, as follows, quote, I must extend my most heartful apology to SNK and Sony Interactive Entertainment. The truth is that the Nintendo Switch exclusive plan was originally decided by NIS America and only later among discussions with influential SNK people did we decide the best option moving forward would to, moving forward would be to have as much exposure as possible. That is why in the end we are bringing the PS4 version of SNK Heroin to the market and even supporting this version this version as a NISA press event and in the press meeting in February and March. In discussion matters with MCV, I thought that some insider information would make them interested in the overall conferation and such lip service did not stand on our side of truth. Once again, I apologize to SNK and Sony if it made it seem made them seem negative towards the PS4 platform in any way and stress that the original goal of a Nintendo Switch exclusive of SNK and Hero came from NIS America. So obviously he had to backtrack on a lot of the comments he made about it so um i don't know what happened there or anything like that i just think that perhaps this was a case he said something wrong or it came out the wrong way but in either case though i think it would be a little bit kind of foolish for them to throw sony under the bus considering that a lot of their games made an appearance on the um PlayStation platform and have done very well on those platforms, I believe. All right. Although there are some, there may be some truth of it since the PlayStation Store is big and a lot of those indie games, some that might be good, do tend to get lost. So there is maybe some truth of it all, but to throw Sony completely over the, under the bus, probably not the smartest thing in the world okay i also think it is although i am looking forward to trying the game out i'm getting it for the switch to be exact it is somewhat a little disappointing to hear that snk heroines is only a digital only title for the ps4 some people may not think it's a big deal but others i'm i would have would have been nice to see a physical copy for those who are picking up the ps4 version either way though Obviously, he apologized. I don't know whether he he realized it was a mistake or he may have gotten a call that says, hey, you screwed this up, fix this right away. So either way, 
odd week for NIS America. On one hand, we're getting a Disgaea remake. On the other hand, they kind of put their foot in the mouth when they sort of made that comment regarding Sony, to be exact. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, I'm going to be talking about a comment made by GameStop regarding the Nintendo Switch and some something that was kind of interesting about what they said. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our video, and for this one, we're going to be taking a look at certain comments that the CEO of GameStop recently made regarding the Nintendo Switch, to be exact. Now, they recently reported, I believe, their financial earnings, and they, so at least with the Nintendo Switch, has certainly given them kind of a boost they need, kind of a boost, and they're certainly happy about that. But certain comments kind of caught some people's attention that they made regarding the Nintendo Switch. And, oops, wrong one. Let me go get the other one here. All right. Um, um, in an article, according to um, according to Destructoid, again, links will be in the description of the video, it points out that, quote, it is, it is in the best interest of GameStop, GameStop ex executives or exclusives to pull to puff up all the products they can, but a recent comment from their CEO shed some lights on what's to come this year for a Switch. We know a few huge titles are in the pipeline, like the new Smash Brothers, another Metroid Prime, and even another Zelda, but GameStop CEO stated on an earnings call that this will be a banner year for the Switch due to some unreleased titles that are coming up. And then the CEO, quote, what we we know what happened with the Wii U. I say this is de definitely a whole different pattern than we saw in the past. We have visibility to the software. So last year was a tremendous year for their software as well as hardware. Between Zelda and Mario Odyssey and all the games they had, it really drove a lot of hardware sales as well as software. I think this year, when we look at the slate of titles, many of which haven't been announced yet, this year also looks very, very, very strong. So I think at least for 2018, we'll continue to see a strong software slate drive additional install base on the hardware increase attach weight. We don't know really visibly for 19 yet, but for 18, it should play out this way. Um, this is kind of interesting to see exactly what he means by un an unannounced titles for the Nintendo Switch. And there could be many ways we could look at it, at it though. It's possible he could be maybe making reference to the fact that there are reports about trying to get a po the Pokemon and the Smash Brothers games out this year. I think there's been stories saying that Nintendo's really want to get that out to keep the momentum with the Switch going. It's also possible he could be mentioning that we could see maybe a brand new IP for Nintendo. Perhaps maybe just like we did saw with last year with ARMS and of course we saw on the Wii U and of course in the Switch era, the Splatoon to be exact, maybe we'll get a new IP. Maybe it's a revival of maybe another dormant franchise that Nintendo may be trying to bring back. Though we know we that they're bringing Metroid Prime 4. Hopefully we'll see some of that at this year E3. Maybe they'll do like an actual Kid Icarus uprising for the Nintendo Switch. Hey, if World Ends With You and and Coda Princess, both World Ends With You on the DS and Coda Princess on the 3DS can be brought to the Switch, I can't see how Kid Icarus Uprising could come, couldn't come either. Or it could be a sequel, or it could be just, you know, a remake of, or a different version of Kid Icarus, whatever. I'm just throwing out a name out there, though. But it's also possible he could be referring to maybe there are some big third-party titles that could be coming to the Switch that could bring people to buy a Switch more. I mean, maybe it's the rumored GTA V as, that could be coming to the Switch. Again, right now, I'm just throwing, I'm just speculating. I'm not saying these are anything official, but it is very interesting to hear this comment from the CEO of GameStop. Perhaps we're going to hear more at E3 this year. So we'll have to wait and see, but overall, Glad the Switch is doing well. Obviously, GameStop is happy. We'll be very interested to see what these unannounced titles are. 
Hopefully we'll hear for more about it at E3, so we'll have to wait and see what comes out at E3. Maybe it's those unannounced titles that he keep, that he mentioned as well. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to be talking about certain comments that Bethesda has recently made. Um, actually, two to be exact. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with the third part of our My True Scent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at some comments Bethesda made, two to be exact. Uh, the first one, if according to what their statement is any hint and indication, there is a good chance that we might get a sequel to Doom 2016, um, according to Nintendo Life, with again link in the description but i'm sure that this i'm sure we don't know if this will come to the switch or not i'm pretty sure it will come to ps4 xbox one but giving bethesda support for the switch though four i wouldn't rule it out to be exact um they made a recent comment in a conversation with dual shocker bethesda software senior vice president of marketing pete hines was asked about any potential news surrounding the company's present at e3 what fans can expect to see. Aside from teasing a lot of new stuff, one phrase in particular has us wondering if it might be a little bit more than meets the eye. Um, and, I, and he said, "Quote: I could give you, I can't, I couldn't give you any guess as to what we're going to announce when those games will be out. But I will say we have a lot of new stuff to talk about at E3. Whether or not folks realize it, here it comes." This is hell on earth time for for us with E3. We are in the midst of so much planning and, and works for all that content, but I really but I'm really excited. Um, what he for those who are not familiar, he said, quote, hell on earth, which supposedly back in the 90s, um, the game Doom 2 was released and that was hell on earth so it's possible we could be getting a actual sequel to doom 2016 and it's chances are that's going to be a remake of doom 2 hell on earth personally i'm down with that i would love to see a sequel to doom 2016 i enjoyed that game yes and i even enjoyed the switch version yeah the switch version wasn't perfect i'll admit it's at 720p, 30 frames per second, compared to the PS4 and Xbox One, which are 1080p, 60 frames per second. Or PC, for that matter, if you have a rig that could display 4K very well and so on. But still, it was impressive that they pulled it off, and I enjoyed the game, though. And I do hope that if this announcement is true, that or that tease that they made, I hope that means we'll hear a Doom 2 happening. Whether or not it's going to come to the Nintendo Switch or not remains to be seen, but I do have some hope that it will. I mean, if not, I, I can always get it on my PS4, but I do hope it does come to the Switch. Speaking of Switch, um, Bethesda recently, um, the same guy, Pete Hines, discussed their future with the Nintendo Switch, according to comicbooks.com. Again, links into the description, though. Um, some questions were asked about them from, and this is still from the interview with DualShock. First off, ports. Uh, what ports are next down the down next down the pipeline? Though he didn't list specific, we can definitely expect more in the title. Um, it just depends. It depends on whether or not we think the game is a good fit for the platform, technically, and whether we think so it's something that the audience wants on the Switch. In that way, it's literally no different than any other platform that we looked at or any other, or any other game that we do. Hopefully, it will be a mixture of both. If there is stuff that folks want us to release on the Switch and it's a good fit and it works, great. If it's new stuff going forward then we think it's a good fit and will work on Switch, then we'll do that too. Um, as far as new titles, Heinz also touched on whether or not the interested in releasing Switch versions at the same time concerning new releases versus waiting on a port much later. Um, he said, quote, that's always our preference, but in the case of Skyrim and Doom, well, 
that was impossible in the case of Wolfenstein 2. We needed extra time and there was no way that we were going to hold off uh, hold the other platforms to wait for the Switch. From my perspective, anytime we could bring it out on the Switch at, at the exact time as the other platforms for new releases, I don't know why we wouldn't. Um, first off though, um, I'm very pleased that so far, at least for now, Bethesda seems to be supporting the Nintendo Switch. Um, they are one of the few third-party Western titles third party western developers that I like. Yes, they have some issues and not every decision they make is great, but I certainly like a lot of the games they put out though. And I personally would be down with them bringing new bringing their ports over, bringing their games over to the Nintendo Switch. Why I understand some people have some issues with ports and all that stuff and I will agree that your system can't be just ports only. I also think there are benefits to having ports as they can help, you know, Keep people occupied as you build up to the big releases though and quite frankly i would be down with them porting you know fallout 4 to the nintendo switch that would be great um dishonor 1 and 2 would be great to bring over to the nintendo switch even um the evil within 1 and 2 that would be great as well and if wolfenstein 2 does well on the switch and i hope it does though i would love to see wolfenstein the old with offline the old blood and the new order come to the nintendo switch as well and hopefully it does well enough that they could bring wolfenstein 3 and that could be brought over to not only the ps4 xbox one pc but switch as well so personally i'm glad that bethesda right now is continuing to support the nintendo switch i wasn't sure at first after they just showed off just skyrim i was thinking okay it was skyrim and one and done and then seeing doom on the switch is just pretty amazing indeed and it does show to me that it's possible that these games could come to the switch obviously there are certain compromises that have to be made and obviously there are certain optimization that has to be done but it's amazing that they could bring these games over so hopefully we'll see more from the hopefully we'll see more from bethesda i'm hoping to see more support for them on the nintendo switch and if that hint that they made earlier is any indication i hope that's a sign that we're going to see Doom 2 on the Nintendo Switch. Or at least announcement of Doom 2, even if it's for the PS4 or Xbox One or PC. Loved Doom 2016 when it was released on the PS4. I enjoyed the Switch version as well, and I would be down if they down if they announced that game and that they bring it to the Nintendo Switch as well, too. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to our fourth and final part, and that is an announcement of a title that, depending on who you're asking, it's either a title you've been waiting for to get to the Switch or not. So, we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our fourth and final part of this My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at the announcement of a certain game that, well, depending on your point of view, either you're looking forward to this or not. So for those who are not familiar, last year, the developer of the Ser Serene Kagura series, the hack and slash game which is famous for its fan service and scattered cladded women and all that stuff um made an announcement saying that he was going to bring the game to the nintendo switch but not in the type that people were expecting as it uses its joy cons when you can <clears throat> quote feel the girls exactly you can interpret that in any way that you want to though well, at, at the time though, the title was only released in Japan as a Nintendo eShop title only, since at the moment they didn't announce any Western release at that time, so the only way you could be able to play that title is if you hooked up to like a Nintendo eSh for the Japanese eShop to download the game over to download the game to your Nintendo Switch, considering the Switch is region free. Well, this week it seems as though they have announced the game and it's coming over here to the West sometime in 2018, though. In an article on NicheGamer.com, links are in the description, though, um, 
Exceed Games and Marvelous have announced a Western release for Shinobi Reflex Serene Kagura, now referred to as Serene Kagura Ref Reflection. Um, this photo um, gameplay footage was shown when they showed off a bit of, I think, Marvelous's teaser trailer for 2018 lineup, which also included, I think, Bullet Witch, Serene Kagura Reflection, um, a remake of the first Serene Kagura game. Um, for the, um, for the, for that a remake of the original one that was on the 3DS for the PS4. I forgot the other one. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have a link to the trailer. So, but anyway, it said that the touch, the quote, touching and interactive spinoff will launch for the Nintendo Switch sometime this summer in North America and Europe via the eShop. The game's post-launch downloadable content content be available following its launch including characters like Yuma, Y-U-M-I, Murskata, M-U-R-A-S-A-K-I, and Rona, R-Y-O-N-A. Here's a rundown of the game quote. Um, after brutal meals, me melees, Rhythmic cooking contests and shockingly serious water gun fights, the Serene Kagura series is ready to take on the world of interactive storytelling for the first time, give players a chance to get to know the shinobi heroines, um, Asuka, in a surprising new way. Serain Kagura Reflection use the unique property of the Joy-Cons to employ the art of reflectionology and massages, melt away Asuka's worries and stress by hand or through a various of useful tools and explore deeper relationship than ever been possible in the series before. The advanced HD Rumble technology provides a more realistic sense of interaction and feeling with Asuka, A-S-U-K-A, helping guide players to react to her signals and deliver some much needed relaxation. Interact with her in different ways will lead players across branchy paths towards one of seven different story scenes and six um, unique endings. And that's just for Asuka. Additional DLC characters. Um, as I mentioned earlier, will be released after launch. Um, I don't know what to say about this title. When I first heard about it, I thought, it, yeah, it was only a matter of time before this is what's going to come over here. And the thing is, I, I'm not 100% sure if this is the one that will interest me. I mean, the hack and slash ones that I played, I thought those were kind of those were fun indeed. Even though we all know what the obvious selling point was, but nevertheless, those were fun. This one, I'm not 100% sure. That's not to say I won't try it or anything like that, but I'm not 100% if this one is going to appeal to everybody, though. Nevertheless, it's we're getting two supposedly risque titles for, tw for the Switch so far in 2018, at least as far as I'm aware of. The first one will be Gal Gun 2. That will come out, I think, the 24th of this month, and of course, Serene Kagura Reflection as well. Um, I will admit, though, as as bizarre and probably perverted as this is going to be, yeah, I am interested to see how they use the Joy-Cons for this game. And Nintendo Life kind of put it up in an interesting way for their heading, saying, when they talked about this as well, it's saying, quote, you'll never look at your Joy-Cons the same way again. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, I, I it's, it's, I'll admit it's an odd, odd entry to put in for the Nintendo Switch. I'll personally admit that I would have preferred a more of the brawler entry they brought in. But you know what? I'm gonna give this one a try. I'll at least give it a try. I'll see how it is. Um, yes, I'll probably have some people call me a preferred. I'll probably feel dirty about it, but who cares? I'm still gonna try it out. Hell. I just pre-ordered Gal Gun 2. If I'm going to play that, then I might as well play this one as well. So, for the Serene Kagura fans out there, um, the summer Serene Kagura reflex re relaxation is coming to the Nintendo Switch. Um, so, that's definitely great. It will be interesting to see how well that title does, though. I know the series has done well and has sold very well. be interested to see how this one does to be exact. <clears throat> Okay, um, this concludes this My Two Cent video for this week. And again, these are my opinion, um, but what are yours? 
What are your thoughts about a remake of the first Disgaea game coming to Nintendo Switch and the PS4 as well? A remake of the classic PlayStation 2 game. Are you excited about this? Are you not excited about this? Would you rather them work on Disgaea 6 and announce that instead? What about the comments and apology that NIS America said about the PS4 and Sony in general though? Do you think that they were spot on? Do you think that's legitimate criticism? Or do you think this is a case of he put his foot in his mouth? Do you think it did more damage? Or do you don't think it did any damage at all? What are your thoughts about GameStop's comments about possibly some unannounced titles for the Nintendo Switch that could be out this year? Do you think... Do you have a good idea what you think those titles are? Do you think he's onto something? Do you think these are titles we are going to be looking forward to? Or... They're not as big as a deal as he claims that it is. Um, and what are your thoughts about Bethesda's recent comments about the Nintendo Switch? Do you want them to bring more ports over? Do you want them to bring more original games? Would you like to see them continue to support the Nintendo Switch? And what about their comments about what they said about Hell on Earth? Is that an indication that we'll hear that Doom 2 is happening? Do you think we'll see it at E3? And is it? do you think there's any possibility it could come to the Nintendo Switch and all? And finally, last but not least, the Serene Kagura um, Reflection, if I'm saying the name correctly, let me, yeah. Ref, reflection, though. Um, what are your thoughts about that coming to the Nintendo Switch? Is it the Serene Kagura game you're looking for? Is it not the one you wanted? Would you have rather preferred the Brawler one, to be exact? Um, is it, Will you be downloading this one? Will you be playing it out as well? Or do you think you'll be like, no, I'll be skipping that one, <laughs> at pretty much. Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? As always, sound off in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. I hope you hit that like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You can do, do PayPal me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye!